Today we're going to talk about online learning and we're going to talk about business strategy and the role it can play in the success of your organisation. So welcome to Profile Street TV and today we're joined by Gavin Woods from Orion Learning. So Gavin, thank you very much for coming in and talking to us today. Pleasure. You wouldn't mind telling us a little bit about yourself and your background? Sure. Um, my background, uh, I've probably worked about 15 years in uh, software sales, uh, mostly with an educational focus, so I'm only really in my third role, so I had a good stickability anyway. Um, but it's, it's mostly working with organisations, both public and private sector, uh, around sales, you know, managing sales and marketing team and engaging with clients. Excellent. And, and what, what does your company do at the moment then? What, what is the services and offer? So Orion Learning, we are, first and foremost, we're a learning company, so it's sort of in the name. Um, and by other terms, we might be known as a digital learning company or an e-learning company or an online learning company. But what, whatever you call it, we, we like to say we get it. Um, so we work with, with organizations, typically to take their content and give them advice, support, tools, technologies, and really transform that content into online learning programs that could be delivered to their staff, to their customers. So it's very particular to the organizations we work with. Um, and we talk about learning that works. So we help organizations to expand their, their knowledge and their perception of what learning is, how it can happen, where it can happen. Um, and then the that works bit is really about the organization. What problem are they trying to solve? So we like to think that we're learning problem solvers. So that might be working with a national charity who wants to protect children and we'll create materials that could be used in the classroom with teachers or with pupils. It could be working with a leading corporate who want to roll out very specialist knowledge about a, a product to their sales team and we'll, we'll help with that. could be working with a government who wants to solve homelessness. It's a big project we're working on at the, at the moment. Incredible. Such a, you know, you think of learning or online learning or any type of learning, you'd never associate it with some of the examples you've given, like homelessness, that's uh, incredible. So uh, what an amazing project to be working on. Yes, uh, it's a very exciting project at the moment. It's quite, quite large scale. So certainly over the last number of years, we, we've seen ourselves as a company move into to bigger, bolder projects, bigger, bolder challenges. And we've developed a good reputation as being being a company who can help break down some of these big challenges. And, you know, you don't, you maybe solve them completely with, with online learning, but, you know, increasingly organisations are, are looking to the benefits online learning can bring in terms of scalability, cost efficiencies, and just getting the consistency of messages out there for, for, for challenges. So, um, you know, we're going to talk, I think, a little bit later about strategy. And sure. we, we sort of help on a day-to-day -day basis, a strategy of how to solve particular problems with, yeah. within organisations. Excellent. And our company is now getting more serious about education for their own staff and maybe even for clients as well, for the, for the customers? Yeah, uh, absolutely. You know, I think, I think not only is it something that companies are looking at, but I think there's an expectation from staff and employees and particularly uh, millennials, not to use too, too many cliche terms, but people, people expect that a company will be interested in their ongoing uh, development and people are very much interested in taking control of their, their development themselves. So, you know, lots of things we do, there's maybe, you know, uh, an element of carrot and stick you know th we do a lot of compliance we do a lot of work within healthcare where you know organizations are trying to drive standards and ensure that that um, customers and service users are, are protected um, but equally you know we'll work with with business schools working with high-end uh, corporate organizations um, so it's, it's just getting a mix of, of, of carrot and stick but very much uh, people are, are looking to learn, people are eager to learn, and they're learning in lots of different ways, maybe even more so than they were even two, three, four, four years ago. So it's it's helping organizations to make the best of what they have in-house, uh, the knowledge and how to capture that. A lot of people maybe aren't sure how to start, how to take that knowledge and transform it in a way that could be delivered effectively as effective learning. So everything we do really comes back to that that learning uh, basis. Incredible. And, and I guess now with mobile phones and mobile tablets, uh, pe learning is, is different to what it was 5, 10, 15 years ago. Actually, people can learn on the go. People yeah. consume content in a different way. So it, it, I guess, breeds more opportunities for companies like yourself. Yeah, abso absolutely. You know, I think the, the big thing we do is provide ad advice and options. A lot of people come to us almost quite worried that there's so many options these days and, and that's that's true um, but but you know a company like Orion can help an organization to break through some of those maybe not focus on the ones they don't need to worry about but but you're right to say 
learning is really happening um, everywhere. You know, you might, for example, yourself enjoy you know viewing videos like this or or videos like like TED talks um, and having the ability. Act, that's actually learning. Mm -hmm. um, we, we don't always think of it as that because you know it's, it's become almost a little bit like entertainment. Um, so learning is a lot more consumable. We all have devices. We all have you know I, iPads, iPhones, and uh, different devices. So people want to learn at a time and place that suits them and online learning really does help with it, that. Mm -hmm. um, but our strap line is, is learning that works, not necessarily just online learning that works. So we, we recognize sometimes the, there's uh, certainly merit in having a blend where people maybe do certain things online, then they come to the classroom, maybe use that classroom time in, in a different way. So you could perhaps do some, some theory online, you could consider some case studies, and then you can come and discuss those case studies in, in the classroom with colleagues. So it's a big, big, sh big shift in, in terms of uh, how different mediums are used, both online uh, and, and classroom. And even with what you might think are more traditional organisations, moving away from maybe checkbox training, get everybody in the room, bore them to death over two to three days, mm -hmm. um, it's more, you know, treating learners like, like consumers of content, uh, allowing them to, to do it at a time and place that suits them, and in bite-sized chunks, and, and very practical as well. So we're very big at, at Orient about focusing on behaviours. What behaviours do you want to change about a particular topic, or embed, or start, or stop? And we have a number of, of educational models that we would apply to help organisations to really drill down why they're doing the training. So, so maybe an organisation who's looking at, at induction Maybe you don't need to spend the first half day explaining the history of the organisation, drill down into what you really want people to take away and what you want them to do within the first three, six months of their time with you. So that's you know just one of the examples where we would we would help provide advice. But you're right to say there's a lot, lot of options available and it's, it's how best can organisations harness those. Incredible. And you mentioned the word they're blended and or blend, blend your learning and we, we hear the word blended now. I, I don't think I heard it blended learning a few years ago, but now I hear it quite a bit. So in your, in your mind, what is blended learning? Well, I, I always like to use analogy. So I like to use analogy if, if learning was a pizza, the, the blend is the toppings that you choose to put, put on it. Um, so there's any number of, of different types of content, different approaches, different training delivery models, and it's what's going to work, work best for a particular organization for how your learners actually want to learn, and what suits them within the context of their roles. So for example, if you were a haulage company with a, a fleet of drivers out on the road, you know, having having classroom training for them maybe isn't isn't the most efficient, but having something that, that was maybe video-based learning that people could, could look at on their own device when they're sitting in a cab, when they're up at a rest stop, uh, that might be a better way to learn. If you were um, focused on supporting people in their workplace so talking again about learning that works if you want to support people in the workplace they need more than just a handbook mm -hmm. they need maybe templates and guides show them how to implement what they've learned so really a blend is is just keeping an open mind to to the problem and getting that mix traditionally between online and classroom but there's lots of other technologies like um, virtual classrooms so web, web conferencing uh, practical templates. We do a lot of workplace learning activities, so things you can actually do to put your learning into practice when you go back to the office. Incredible. I'm just imagining as you're explaining this, I could imagine for some companies or organisations this could be a real competitive advantage uh, when they deliver blended learning to their teams. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, you know, I, I don't necessarily have all the stats, but there's certainly good, good research to show the amount of investment that, that organisations put into learning and development is very strongly linked to their, their success. Um, and and, and very much so, you know, if you if you consider the, the flexibility and scalability that online learning or, or blended learning could give, um, and if an organization can harness that and, and harness the knowledge that quite often they already have within their own organization, so it's not always about bringing external experts in, you'd be surprised if you could find proper ways to capture it, how much expertise you actually have within your own organization. Uh, and we provide support ar around that. So very rare would it be that we would create an online learning program that wouldn't have almost the whole organization represented in it, different roles, different scenarios that are relevant to that particular company, and, and harnessing what they already have, obviously adding to it, giving them advice and support from our, our instructional design team, um, but really helping people, yes, to get ahead and, and, and stay ahead 
Incredible. And do you think, and we mentioned it once or twice so briefly, do you think mobile devices are, are key now to learning? Uh, have, have things changed? You've been in this industry for a little while. Have you seen changes in how learning's developed? See, see massive changes, you know, and, and you know, te technologies play a part of that, you know, including technology that maybe weren't specifically um, just focused on learning. So we think about um, the likes of Apple devices not supporting Flash um, and then... Um, you know, Adobe saying that they're going to stop stop Flash, and then suddenly overnight browsers decided they would stop supporting Flash because it wasn't worth investing in it. And e-learning traditionally had used Flash-based authoring tools, so there's been a shift from from Flash content to HTML5 content. That's maybe getting a little bit technical for some people, but it's more a move towards more accessible uh, content that can be better displayed and optimized for for mobile devices. So certainly, almost every every project that we do, if not every every project has content delivered in, in different formats. So we're working with a, a global sporting body at the moment, and it's for, for content uh, pre-tournament to be accessed by players. And it's imperative that players who are maybe in their you know early, mid-20s can access that on, on phones. So they're doing quite heavy compliance content, but we've taken the heaviness out of it, and we've given it in a way that's, that's engaging, that's, that, that's uh, in, in the right format for them. Um, because we did, we do a lot of user user centric design, and we did user surveys, and we just found that was the expectation of almost almost one hundred percent of the, this particular learning group wanted it on phones. So there's some considerations. You know, we're, we're a mix of of technical design and educational uh, teams within Orion, and there are considerations of how you present content. If you're going to take what we call a mobile first approach, you think of the screen size you have maybe on your phone compared to your your laptop, and that needs to be taken into account. Um, particularly in terms of how much much text you might use on on screen, so it's it's that kind of expertise that, that we would bring to help fill in the gaps. So people might have an inkling that maybe phones or or tablets might be the way to go, but they're not sure how to do it technically. Mm -hmm. they're, they're certainly not sure how to do it in a way that's going to be a really positive learning experience. Excellent. So and we're talking about how education and education platforms could be a, a competitive advantage for some companies and even yourselves. And how how do you stand out from the competition in, in your sector? Well, we do we do a lot of online learning, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, practice what you preach is excellent. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you know, we we would do obviously uh, we do a lot of reflection and, and and an ongoing professional development. Stay up to stay up to date on the latest trends, so you know we can use them for for the benefits of our clients. You know, at, at an expert level. Uh, but yes, the online learning sector is is a is a growing sector, and it's it's quite diverse. Where we feel our our particular strength is at Orion is is in. Um, what we call custom content. So say that ability to work with an organization on any topic. So we're almost challenge an organization to bring us, bring us a topic where we haven't done something similar now, uh, which is obviously very interesting, moving from day to day, different clients, maybe from health and safety content one day to, to child protection or equality and diversity for, for a local university. Um, and it's, it's really about, about, I suppose, applying, um, our in-house models and recognised industry models, you know, um, from the learning perspective, and really producing learning that works. So, we feel that we we stand out in terms of our ability to take big challenges uh, and actually get our head around them quite quickly. Uh, leverage what an organisation knows, the expertise that they have, uh, provide both services and and guidance, and work collaboratively with organisations. So, we've seen a trend moving to to say bigger, bolder. Uh, challenges over the last number of years with with some quite significant clients. Incredible, and and I'm thinking again of you, of yourselves and what what you're doing. Would would you have any advice for companies who are thinking of uh, investing in an online portal or online education system or a, a blended learning uh, system for themselves and their own own uh, staff? Yeah, you know, a lot of people we speak to might be at the start of their, their journey, you know, and they're, they're dipping their toe in, in the water and they're not necessarily sure where to start. Uh, and they, they tend to come to us with perhaps a lot of, lot of questions, which is good. So we always start about, talk about uh, starting a conversation. So that's, that's our, our, our strap line. So there are companies like, like Orion that are happy to, to give advice and, and support and, and guidance to people. The big thing is... A little bit forget about the technology. You know, the technology is an enabler to the learning and, and your plans. Think about your your problem and maybe describe your problem to to maybe maybe the team at Orion, 
Uh, what, what are you looking to achieve? What are you seeing in your business? What would really help you if you could do X, Y, and Z? It, the likelihood is that experts like, like Orion can, can provide the technology and support and a, and a vision to help make that happen. So that, that's a big thing. Sometimes people get tied up in the technology and maybe they feel that they're, they're not um, you know, technology driven themselves. Um, you don't, don't really have to worry about that. If you focus on the problem, uh, it, the technology is a facilitator to, to, to achieve the change you want to achieve. Excellent. And, and I guess uh, what we're talking about, it can be a sort of a, or one part of a business strategy. So I promised we talk about business strategy as well today. Uh, and, and very interesting and a critical part today in, in, in maintaining uh, quality in the company and even keeping our staff engaged and, and skilled. Uh, there's no doubt about that. But can we talk about business sure. strategy and what, what, what do you think uh, or see as the purpose of business strategy? Well, you, you almost mentioned, mentioned the word in the question. You know, I think it's a, it's a strategy is about, about purpose. You know, it's about the direction of travel of an organization. Mm -hmm. And it's important to maybe say what, what it necessarily isn't. It's not necessarily managing the, the company on a day-to-day -day basis. It's more about, about the big picture. You know, strategy is more about uh, what has to be done, uh, not necessarily the minute, minutiae detail of how it's going to be done. So we certainly at Orient try to, to, to keep the two separate, which takes a little bit of, of learning because you know, we, ha we have a board and uh, we have you know four executive directors and we have two non-exec directors and that's where we would deal with with our strategy and there, there's that overlap obviously some people working within the business on a day-to-day -day basis as well so it's important that we we take time to look at the big picture so i would compare it to a tiller on the boat it, it's what's setting the direction and maybe um maybe has to to move in advance of things coming down the line um, but then you, you have to trust your team and your staff when you actually decide on your strategy and direction and, and you look to implement it. So certainly I think strategy includes things like your overall purpose as a company, you know, analysis of, of the market that you operate in, where you want to go, what things do you want to be doing. And we always ask clients, even when we're working on our, our projects, what does success look like? So you know, what does success look like for your company within the, the timeline of your strategy, which probably advisable is maybe three years, things move so quickly. But you know, what, what does success look like in three, five years? What will you be doing? What will you not be doing? Um, so strategy is, is really key. Uh, it's not necessarily just a top-down thing. It's, a, it's about having it implemented and embedded across the organization and the things you need to do that. But certainly it's it's a starting point and the, the direction. And it's also a good a good referral. So we would, we would review and refine our, our strategy and, and it's, I think it's, it's certainly worth doing that, reflecting, seeing how far you've come, seeing what you would do differently. Um, but, you know, it's, it's taking that big picture and uh, preparing it for, for implementation. Incredible. And do you think even small businesses should have a business strategy or a corporate strategy for their company? Yes, you know, certainly do. I think it applies to all organisations. Maybe I'm a little bit biased because sort of my, my background, you know, even, even through university, I've always focused on strategy. So it seems strange to me that somebody maybe wouldn't have a, have a strategy. Now, it could be that somebody might be a, you know, a, a sole proprietor, um, you know, very busy. Like it is, they probably have more strategy already than they, they realise. But taking the time to actually write that down actually forces you to reflect it, it forces you to seek advice and support from other people, be that industry experts, be that development agencies. Uh, and it, it forces you to, to look at what are you doing uh, and it gives you a useful benchmark as you go forward to assess your day-to-day -day activities and every so often bring, you know, bring your head up uh, and say, am I, am I doing what I intended to do or am I you know, veering off, off course here? Amazing. And, and would you have any tips or techniques for companies to implement their strategy? Uh, I'll use another analogy. There's, uh, there's a nice analogy about um, five frogs sitting on a log and uh, four decide to jump off. And so it would ask you how many are left? One. Well, most people would say one. The answer is actually five because deciding to jump off a oh, log and actually doing good. it are two different things. So I think... Yeah. To, you know, doing away days are great and writing the greatest strategy, and I'm maybe guilty of this in the past, writing the greatest strategy document and then realizing that it's quite difficult for you to actually implement when you get into the day-to-day -day of, your, of, of your job. Um, so it's, it's very important, I think, to, 
to actually look at what you you need to do so i, I was on a, a recent course actually with the institute of directors and one of the biggest things i took away was the concept of alignment so having having come up with a strategy and having looked at the markets and and the services you're going to offer um actually looking at okay that's where we want to be but where are we now and how do we move from where we are now to where we want to be in terms of people maybe in terms of culture and embedding values across the organization maybe in terms of our knowledge for particular sectors or markets or or, or trends um, so i think that's that's a big thing um, because with with any sizable business you're not going to be able to do it all yourself so at some point you're going to have to communicate it to other people and you're going to have to get them to do their part and you're going to have to get them to tell you what uh, they actually need to fulfill this strategy uh, on your, with you and on, on your behalf. So I think, I think that's a big thing. You know, having good intentions is one thing. How do you practically put, put it in, 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 into, in, into practice? And I think communication and culture really are really key to that. So a big, uh, having just uh, you know, redefined our strategy, uh, for, for sales and marketing within Orion, we, we, we took the team out and we made sure that they were up to speed with what was expected of them, the role that they would play and everybody would buy into it. And I think that's that's really key because the intention and the, the implementation, sometimes uh, it gets lost in the middle. It's amazing actually, so it's something if I, if I achieved half of what I decided I was going to do, I'd be, exactly, <laughs> I'd be exactly. a different player. But even this, you know, I, I, you, you raise such a valid point, I think, you know, we this concept or idea oh my word i don't know a year or two years and then i decided or said publicly uh we would do it it's still from that it took five months to actually uh, get it kicked off so yeah. there's a massive difference between as you're saying to, to yeah. say or pre prepare i think you're going to do something and actually physically doing it yeah. and uh, it's something i'm aware of but you did uh, i love the frogs <laughs> story i'm going to use that a lot i think but i think i think having that that regular review and reflection because the strategy isn't a pair of handcuffs you know it's, it's your strategy you own it now you don't necessarily want to be changing every day of the week mm -hmm. but certainly taking that time to reflect and that might prompt you to say, oh, actually, there's an alignment issue here. Yeah. I, I wrote all sorts of good things, but then I've been doing X, Y, and Z. So I need to stop doing that or find somebody else who can do that for me or bring in more resource or get some external support. Uh, and I think that's, that's really important. So we, we would encourage that even just from a learning perspective that you always reflect uh, on, on your performance, you reflect on your behaviours, you, you reflect where you're at and, and where you need to be and maybe what you need to change. Incredible. And you said you, you, you've invested in the team and your new strategy for, for this year and, and focused on sales. So have you any, any advice uh, to fresh off the press in regards to driving sales? Yeah, well, certainly my my background is in you know is in in sales and marketing now. Within Orion, we we sort of changed the name of our team, so our, our team is actually called the client services team. So we're we're trying to drive obviously the business success, but how we do that in Orion is really about long term relationships, mm -hmm. and, and nobody really likes to be sold to, <laughs> and, and no 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 one more so maybe than than me. But you know, I've always been been very big on sort of values based selling. You know, if you if you as an organization, whatever sector you're in, can focus on your customer, develop emotional intelligence and, and empathy, and then use just good, honest advice, support, do what you say you're gonna do, lo lots of lots of integrity. That that almost shines through, and, and seals, uh, you know, uh, would follow for one of a better word, follow. So I think, you know, for any organization, focus on your customer, um, focus on the areas, not necessarily where you have a USP. It's, it's great if you, you have a market where you're unique in it and you're the, the only one doing it. But more often than not, if you don't, ha if you don't have competition, you maybe you're not in the right area. <laughs> so it's, it's areas where you can differentiate and that could be customer service, that could be product quality, that could be bringing something new to the market, perhaps like mm -hmm. low cost airlines did the first time round, that sort of blue ocean. Um, uh, market development but it's it's really about um, focusing on on the customer and if you keep the, the customer focused and you're responsive to their needs uh, and you make it easy for them to understand what you do and the value you can bring that that's probably the best way to drive sales now I would add that with a little caveat that I do think that sales is a profession uh, and I do think that there's fundamental sales basics that you would expect anybody within that role within an organization to have in terms of how they are diligent in, in following up with with opportunities and, and communicating but a lot of its core skills and just good honest 
relationships with people. So we certainly take a lot of pride in, in terms of how we go about our, our business within Orion, within the client services team, you know, trying to go out of our way to support people, mm -hmm. trying to help them expand their horizons of what learning is. And if they end up working with us, it's great. If they don't, we're still happy, a bit like yourself, Kieran, to, to share knowledge and, mm -hmm. and to share you know content marketing and, and assets about learning. Incredible. And, and uh, so it's very clear that you're, you're very knowledgeable about what's happening in the industry. So what do you think uh, is going to happen in the, in the future? How do you think it's going to develop and, and even for yourselves? Well, if I, if, I, if I knew at the moment, I'd probably keep that to myself because it, it probably would be a unique selling point. But um, obviously within, within the, the wider you know, business environment at the moment, obviously there is a lot of uncertainty. We're, we're a few months out of what's supposed to be Brexit. Hope if it happens, if it, if it doesn't. Yeah. So, you know, that poses problems for strategies and you, you've, you've probably seen yourself in, in the news, you know, business bodies actually speaking out about the uncertainty that Brexit is creating. So strategy does like certainty uh, and some people are t adopting different strategies within, within the context of that un uncertainty. Um, where I think things are going, I think Northern Ireland uh, as, a, as a business community should be confident. I think we've always uh, batted above our, our station, so to speak, and, and certainly Orion, you know, the vast majority of our work is actually outside of Northern Ireland. Um, you know, we're, we're working with clients glo globally in, in the States, uh, right throughout the U UK and Ireland, throughout Europe. Um, so I think Northern Ireland should, should, be, should be confident. Um, I think we are outward looking. Um, and I think we we have we have the core skills and we have the core business community to make a real success of whatever mm -hmm. comes our way. If I knew the future, I would probably build it into my in, into my strategy. But I think you know sometimes when you, when you look at the environment, not knowing everything forces you to then balance uh, risk. So we've taken a couple a couple of steps within Orion linked to Brexit to to prepare ourselves the best we can. Um, not, not least because we had to communicate with some of our clients who, who were starting to ask ask questions about the uncertain. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's, I say it's, um, it's something that um, we, should, we should be positive about and, and, and uh, outward looking about. No, no one really knows what the future holds, but then if we did, it wouldn't be half as exciting. This is very true. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Calvin, for thank coming you. in and telling us all about your company and, and what you're doing and, and educating us around blended learning and business strategy. So really appreciate that. If anyone wants to reach out to yourself or find out more about the services you offer, then what's the best way for them to do that? Well, they could visit Orion Learning website. So it's www.orionlearning.com. Or they could pop us an email, hello at orionlearning.com. Amazing. Excellent. And we'll have the live links underneath the, the video so anyone watching this can click below and uh, be sure to visit the site and engage with uh, uh, Gavin and his team. And thank you very much for watching uh, this video today. Um, this is Profile 3, the content marketing agency. And we're coming to you from the Innovation Factory here in the Springfield Road in Belfast. Hopefully you'll stay tuned and watch our next video. Thank you again. All the best.